right, guys, welcome to the reading component of Power Up. We have done playing, we've done watching. So if you've seen those videos, make sure you do watch them, like, blah, 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 subscribe to the channel, all that kind of st do great stuff. If you're watching live. Hey, it's so great to have you and share this Friday afternoon with you. My name is Maud Garrett, joined by Trisha Hirschberger, and we're going to get stuck into reading. Yes. But to do that, we're going to enlist the help of Amy Cassandra Martinez from Geek Farm, who's going to give us a bit of uh, reading news. So what's going off, Amy? Ooh, JK Rowling. New book, children's book, the Ichabod. Can we just talk yeah. about the word the Ichabod? Ica bog. Ica gross bog shit. Gross shit. Wait, bog bog. Is, Wait is, since when does bog mean poop? In Australia, bog. Oh. Are you kidding me? That's it's, a very have, different thing. A bog here is a swamp. It's like a type of terrain. Yeah, use swamp in a toilet bowl. Flush it. Ew. Bog. So what yeah. do you call oh. an actual bog in Australia? We don't really have swamps. We have oh. marshlands, marshes. Okay. But like, and guys, this is like what the 20s taught us all in Australia. The AGB, the after grog bog. If you spend the night drinking, the next morning you do an AGB and you know that you'd been drinking because it's a double flusher. It's not, it's not oh. good, guys. So oh. when I hear Ichabog, I'm like, that's a... That's a that's not a good word. Ew. Well, um, yeah. So this is her new children's novel. It's <laughs> gonna um, she's gonna release um, a few uh, chapters at a time of the next seven weeks. Right now, they're free. Uh, they will be free until she releases the novel in uh, November. No. Yes, it'll be a book in November. I just want to hear your thoughts. There's a lot of details about it, but at the end of the day, it's still from JK and she's done stuff. Um, yeah. Okay. I will say, as someone who's trying to homeschool a tiny human right now, releasing it in 34 installments starting on Tuesday with one installment released every weekday is kind of cool. Because then okay. it helps you like break it into daily lesson plans if you're doing a reading thing. And I know... A lot That's of helpful, parents yeah. that have enjoyed reading the Harry Potter series with their kids. So maybe that, I mean, that's interesting. Uh, As an I adult, like I don't know that I love that release structure, but. um, Yeah, look, JK's written a couple of books since Harry Potter that are, have nothing to do with the Wizarding World. Uh, one of them she wrote under a uh, pseudonym. And this one, I think she's just trying to, I guess, pivot. But she's, yeah, just been a little hit and miss with her tweets the last couple of years. And some of them have rubbed me the wrong way. Um, I just think if you've got a platform like that, you just can't make uninformed tweets that can potentially be upsetting uh, for a lot of people. Um, and she hasn't quite figured that part out. And as someone who's like barely in the public eye, like I've even figured out some more common sense than that uh in saying that like i mean i love the wizarding world of harry potter it's it's so important to me mm -hmm. um i just i, I i'm so stuck on the name guys <laughs> it's yeah. <dog. laughs> yeah it's you know it's it's oh you're laughing because of the name still how it's poop. <laughs> it's poop mod said it was poop then it's poop. But I will tell you, Logan has a lot of books that use the word bog. And I don't know that I will ever read them the same way again. Sorry. <laughs> well, because it rhymes with hog and frog. And hobgoblins usually live in a bog. Like, there's a lot of... I know, and you think it's poop, so you can't stop laughing. It's gross. Ew. <laughs> that nerd in chat, you are cracking me up right now. That nerd in chat says, gross S-H-I-T, a children's novel. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to learn sooner than later, I guess, some of the times, because, you know, the first few years of your life, icky bugs are someone else's problem. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, did you just icky bugs now that? <laughs> outside looking very mischievous. Hi Hilarious. Sorry, guys. Uh, yeah, thanks, uh, Amy, for delivering and dropping that news on us. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> Mod. Let's go. Mod. Amy, no. we love you. You are anything other than an Ichabog. We will see you okay. in just a second. Thank you, Amy. Oh, God. I'm All sorry. right, Mod. Let's bring it back. 
what yeah. are you reading? And actually, uh, while you're talking about what you're reading, I'm going to go get mine because I forgot to bring oh. it in the room. Hold on. Talk. Yeah. So um, this is a series that I actually used to read uh, quite a while ago. I'm talking like 15 years ago when my brother recommended it to me. Oh, maybe oh, I can't remember when I first read them. Maybe 20 between 2010 and 2012, actually. Um, it's a series by R.A. Salvatore called The Legend of Drizzt, and it's about a drow, which is a dark elf in the D&D world. And it's kind of like a D&D campaign, but written out following the character of Drizzt. Um, I think I read the first eight books of the series around that time because my brother was really, really into them, and I thought that it was such an amazing and fun read. Like, it was like playing Dungeons and & Dragons, and it, the characters were really great. Exploring the world was really fantastic. Um, and I think the hardest part for me was that it was about sort of like being a soldier and being like almost a weapon in, in itself um, and exploring those relationships from being super oppressed because... Um, for people that don't know, in the drow hierarchy system, men are low in the pecking order. It is all about the women. If you are a woman, a female drow, you have positions of power um, because their deity, Lolf, is the spider queen. So I really like that in a D&D rich world, which back in the heyday was super sort of male dominated. You had this entire species who were deadly and, you know, full of precision and ruthless and they were women. And I thought that was really, really cool. Um, so I started listening to the series again. Um, I bought the book a while ago. The narration's all right, I guess. He kind of he has um, a predictable speech pattern. But I've just I've missed the series and Ari Salvatore has written a lot and I was able to interview him in 2011. Oh, okay. So then I would have been reading them for maybe 2009. That's very um, cool. Through this, through my radio show, because I had a gaming segment and they were like, did you want to interview Ari Salvatore? Because he's the uh, world builder for this game called Kingdoms of Amalur, which I played to death on the PlayStation 3. Um, and I ended up, I was supposed to have like an eight or 10 minute interview and I ended up talking to him for like 42 minutes. Um, and it was like half an hour before his birthday, you know, when the clock struck midnight when he was in Maine, I think, and he was drinking whiskey. And yeah, I spent a little bit of time talking about the video game, which I loved, but then I started talking about this series and we had such a great chat about it. Um, so yeah, I think it holds a really dear place in my heart and I'm really excited to, to get back into this. Does, does anyone else, did anyone else? Yeah, I see people in chat saying that they enjoyed, uh, like Beertastic Yogi says, the Drist books are awesome up to a certain point. Yeah. yeah, I only got to the first eight, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, but so far, like, I mean, I've just finished Homeland and I'm going to move on to the Crystal Shard. How long uh, what do you would think? you say the books are? Like, how long does it take you to get through the first few? Um, They're pretty quick and easy-ish reads. I will let you know how long the um, book goes for. This is wonderful. Good oh, 10 hours and 48 minutes. So that's reasonably, um, that's reasonably quick. Also Ten not hours. an audible ad, just in case anybody was wondering. I swear to God, I, my pockets should be lined at this stage. And I, I feel like just, I feel like a freebie queen here. No, well, see, because it's hashtag not an ad, we can say whatever we want about it. So there you go. Okay, the narrator was kind of predictable in his speech patterns. Uh. <laughs> yeah, get it. Uh, right. Mod, Mod always has a lot to say about the narrators. I do. Make or break, man. Make or break. That, and when I was nine years old, I was in the storytelling club uh, in primary school. And, you know, the way you tell a story is really important. You're not reading words, you're telling a story. That is the difference. And so many narrators are just reading when you should be like telling, showing, sharing. Sharing. I like that better. What's I like your book? That better. This is what I'm reading right now. That looks like a Hobbit thing. It is. So this is, uh, this is the Hobbit graphic novel, J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit an illustrated edition of the fantasy classic and we got this i want to say at our baby shower because we were asking for books for our future tiny human before he was here with us and um that we thought that a picture book edition so it is a full graphic novel it's still not really like super for kids like not like a baby book or anything um but we thought a picture book edition of the hobbit might be a good way to go 
Uh, and good. friends of ours thought that, and they gifted this to us, which is awesome. Like, there's just no way this kid's not going to be a nerd, huh? Well, he has now seen the 1977 The Hobbit, as we talked about in last week's episode, I believe. And he walks around the house singing the greatest adventure. And it makes me so happy. And he has a little, this is the best part. This is when, this is when you're like, mod your nerd ovaries will just explode. He grabs his little foam sword and goes, and I shall call you Sting. And holds it up. And it's like, I'm doing everything right parenting this child. Oh, that's really cute. Yeah, it's. <laughs> It's amazing. It's it's amazing, 100%. But yeah, we've been, uh, because he likes the movie so much, we are now able to uh, kind of start on this adventure. It's still a lot going on on one page for him. Yeah. But we've gotten into it, and it's really well done. I love it. It's certainly has more detail to the story in it than the 77 The Hobbit movie, which I feel like is like watching that movie in Spark Notes version, because it... Just goes from one thing to the next so, so fast. Minutes. Yep. That, yeah. and Bilbo's pants are so high. His belt is literally under his nipple. <laughs> well, that's how he rolls. Maybe that's why Logan pulls his pants up so high, because he's trying to be Bilbo. But, like, take a look at Gollum in this. Like, his real name, at... Pablo. <laughs> he's trying to be Pablo Baggins. <laughs> he only oh, wow. said that for, oh, like, two days, scary. but it's the best. It's the best. Yeah, STS is Epic Saga of Pablo Baggins. Indeed. That's so funny. Um, so there it is. That's what we're reading. What are you reading? I'm always looking for recommendations in the chat. Geek Bomb's got a Goodreads as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, for Nerdist, we're still covering June. June. Dune. That just feels weird saying Dune. Dune. Um, Dune. Yeah, if you're reading or watching that. Uh, recommendations are fantastic. Let's bring Amy back in to do a little bit of Bombs Away Q&A. Yay questions all right so this one's from our patreon over on geekbomb patreon.com slash geekbomb i will also be getting a question right now from twitch but this one's from f brain uh have you ever stopped midway in a book movie or video game because it was too scary oh for sure which one really quickly though the nerd is trying to recommend me the dresden files which i completely agree with saying james marston's narration uh, obviously is great he does the whole books. Uh, I'm on my second read through the entire series on that listen through. And I'm a massive fan of Dresden. And we've covered the first two books in Geek Bomb Book Club. So yes, on the same page with that one. Um, have I stopped something because it got too scary? Yes. Um, I think I watched uh, a minute 42 of The Lodge. Mm, okay. Yep. Uh, and I saw uh, Alicia Silverstone shoot herself. And uh, in the mouth, and I was and killed herself, and I was like, "Oh, that's me done!" <laughs> wow. Have you seen the lodge, Amy? No, but now I want to. What? It's wrong with me. I'm crazy. It's what it is. <laughs> Not for me. The Last of Us. I had to stop because it was getting a little much for me. I just kept getting my mm -hmm. head decapitated through gnawing, like the clicker would eat my oh, head. Yeah. Yeah neck out and my head collapsed off and I was like this is just happening a little bit too much yeah I was really into reading horror novels as a kid um in like middle school middle school and I would say probably early high school until I thought man I I got goosebumps I got fear street like I got this down and picked up a Stephen King because I thought I was all hot crap because I could read all that other stuff I got one chapter into it and threw the book across yep. the room. It slid under my bed. I was convinced that clown lived <laughs> under my bed because that's where the book went. Uh, and I never, ever again read a horror book. Not ever in my life. And that was probably 10th grade. Um, and yeah, to this day, I'm a big old baby now. I don't mess. If something is scary, like I remember for... That new movie thing show. Did they do that new movie thing show when you were at Source Fed Nerd? Okay, that new movie thing show was a show that we did where we went and saw new movies in theater the day of their release and then reviewed them and made a video. Anyway, for that new movie thing show, several times I pulled the short straw and had to go see the horror film with either Steve or Meg. 
Um, but all of us were babies and none of us wanted to see horror films. So we drew straws every time and whoever got the short straws had to go. Um, and it was awful. It was awful every single time. I hated it. I didn't sleep for days. Yeah, I... I'm not a I, horror person. I have to watch horror for work a lot of the time. Like, I cover the junket circuit. So it's like, I get sent out to do horror. I saw The Conjuring 2 for that. And I um, stormed into the room and then yelled at James Wan. And I was like, I knew... Uh, what is it? Not masochistics. I was like, are you a sadistic shit? And he was like, I'm glad that you had that reaction. And I was like, yes. <laughs> um, and then we became friends from the, from that and because he's Australian. Um, so that was kind of interesting, but I hated watching that. And now it's so weird. Uh, every time I get, well, when I was asked to do a cover a horror movie, I was just away on business every time. Sure, Jan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This wow. next question is from L. Efron over on Twitch right now. What wine do you pair with your books? <laughs> oh, my God. I love that it's within reaching distance right now. That is hilarious. So for those of you listening to the podcast version of this, Maude just reached out of frame and grabbed a half-open bottle of wine <laughs> and is now taking a swig from it. Oh, that's good. So what is it? I like red wine, but uh, <laughs> red, I like red wine. I'm turning into a wine wanker. Uh, it's nice, but the problem is I'm allergic to red wine. So if I have two glasses of it, I start feeling it the next day. So this lockdown, I explored more rosés and white wine. White wine hurts less. Um, except <laughs> I had a, you know, like when you get to the two-fifth bottle mark, could be halfway through, looks a little bit less, and then you pour a glass, and then you realize there's actually not much left. So you yes. just pour it all, and then yes, you realize. Yes, I, I do know part. that feeling all too well. So oh, the other you said you started exploring rosés and whites. That you get get all wine cork dork on me. What varietals are you drinking? Pinot Noir, darling, and then a Sauvignon Blanc. They're mine. <laughs> I okay. have to figure out um, what kind of rosés are there. I like a sparkling rosé actually if I'm getting a bit fancy I like a sparkling okay um, a bit pink champagne but they're my they're my two go-to's and if you need to know the best bottles under ten dollars or twenty dollars from Ralph etc or from Trader Joe's I'm your gal yeah do um that's uh a bit quarantine. Andrea Renee's doing what's good wines now uh I don't know if she's doing it on what's good games or if she started a separate twitch channel uh, or a separate YouTube channel. But yeah, check that out. I follow it on Instagram. Um, excellent, excellent thing for quarantine. But if I had to pick, I mean, I'm since moving to California, I have intentionally tried to become a bit of a cork dork. I still don't know anywhere near as much as so many people. Um, I would say I'm a fledgling cork dork, if you will. But I really like a specific varietal of red that's a uh, GSM blend. So it's Grenache Syrah and Mavedra all blended together. Do you have a GSM? Right now, 30% Grenache, 30, 40% Syrah, 30% Mene, uh, Mene, Mavedra. Mavedra. Yes. Yeah. See, what... we are long lost sisters, Maud. And this one's called Private Office. I spilt it on my private office, actually, when we did book club. <laughs> I don't I know like that I've tried Private Office. What? Where did you get it? So this is part of the HideawayLO.com company. Uh, mm. Hideaway Wine is locally made. So I think they do, you can jump on the, fuck, no, I just did another paid promotion, Trisha. That's three. <laughs> I haven't paid for any we, of them. See, Power Up just hasn't caught on with the brands yet. You know, we oh, need to I'm just highlight really like, cut this everything. episode and send it out. <laughs> um, and yes, you have a great point. Um, I do have a bar in my house. Yes, that's true. When I said I'm a fledgling cork dork, I do have a bar in my house. But that's like all the you, way. You have a legit bar in your house. Downstairs like, that's and through the secret entrance. It's, it's that's a little out of the way. That's 45 without blushing that bar. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait till I can have you over and we can do an episode of Power Up from my medieval bar. Yes, please. Yes. Oh my God, count me in. It will happen at some point, I swear. Um, but yes, that is, uh, that's been Bombs Away Q&A. Thank you so much, Amy and Maude. I love that you had a GSM just out of reach. I, I can't even oh, tell yeah. you. Oh, yeah. We, I think it's quite nice. I'm a fan of that one. That makes we sense. We are so related like, in a past you know, life. 
a bit lighter. Uh, the nerd, this is one of the best comments of the show. The nerd said that Maud is out negative 6,000 K, uh, six, sorry, 6 K, 6,000 for ads today. Yeah, I made negative 6,000 this show. <laughs> good. Cool. Cool, cool. Great. Yeah, good. Power Up is doing awesome, everybody. <laughs> We'll get better. Oh my God, guys, if we ever do have an ad in the near future, like pat us on the back because we, we earned it. Like we earned it. <laughs> I'm they gonna make we're professionals. <laughs> um, Amy, uh, thank you so much for Bombs Away. You are a rock star. Thank right, you for Maud. that. Guys, thank you so much for not only to, um, following or subscribing to Trisha's uh, Twitch channel. If you don't know it, it's twitch.tv slash Trisha Hirschberger. If you guys want to support Geek Bum at all, we do have a Patreon. And honestly, your donations run the company. They are super, super needed. Um, so thank you so much for that if you are a bummer backer. If you want to be patreon.com slash Geek Bum, this is just one of the components of all the perks. We are actually expanding and extending some of the perks as well so that you get more bang for your buck. And we're also going to be opening up our Discord to the public and uh trisha i know that you've got a discord as well so join all of those build the community dragon riders bummer backers unite yay huzzah yeah my discord is just where people hang out in between streams and chill with each other and i have only been a member of geek bombs discord for oh, almost a month now probably but that's a lovely community too isn't it great? Yeah, yeah, really wonderful. So thank you to everybody who's here today. Thank you to everyone who came, anyone who subbed or gift to subbed. You guys are awesome. Um, and yeah, the next time I will be live on Twitch will be Sunday uh, after the Lord of the Rings reunion. Hopefully beating Final Fantasy VII Remake. We started Chapter 18 in my last stream, which is the last chapter. I will put on the Tifa cosplay and hopefully we can make it happen. So again... I know that things are really tough in the world right now, and we appreciate you just spending some time with us, so thank you. Uh, also, shout out to Garth uh, McMurray, who said, next episode is sponsored by Ichabod 2 Double Decker. Oh. <laughs> so I got the giggles before. So, so much poop today. So much poop. It was a shitty day. Literally. It is. It, you know what? It's on point for the day. You are not wrong. It is on point for the day. Um, so yeah, I did see someone say run an ad at the end of the stream guaranteed it's Raid Shadow Legends. So I'm totally going to do that just as an experiment. So thank you everybody so much for watching and we will see you next Friday with more Power Up or I will see you on Sunday with Final Fantasy. Thanks for watching everybody. Bye bye. Bingo, bye -bye.